Salve citizens of Nova Belgica. Today I want to tell you a 17th century tale, a true tale that involves pirates, changing loyalties, and the founding of America. Okay, I'm going to talk about a guy named Jan Jansoon. Okay, Jansoon was a Dutch privateer, okay, uh, basically a sailor, basically a pirate, uh, working on behalf of the Dutch government, uh, who was at war with Spain uh, throughout the 17th century. Okay, so basically Jansoon was captured uh, in about 1618 by some pirates from the Barbary Coast. Now the Barbary Coast was some territories loosely affiliated with the Ottoman Empire, uh, and this area was in Northern Africa. Okay, so he got captured, uh, brought back to North Africa, and he quickly actually converted to Islam and started working with his captors. Okay, so he basically started another crew. He changed his name to uh, Murad Reis, and he went out and started working for, you know, the Moors, as they were called back then. Uh, somewhat loyal to the Ottoman Empire, but they also had their independence. He uh, had some famous raids. He was actually infamous uh, for attacking Iceland with his crew, and they, they, um, they gathered, they captured about, you know, three, four hundred slaves, livestock, silver. They, inv uh, they did a raid on Ireland, uh, many of the islands in the Mediterranean. Okay, so this is what he was kind of famous for. He actually became a very wealthy man. Uh, he was captured again in 1635, uh, this time at the island of Malta by the Knights Hospitaller, okay, which were basically similar to the uh, Teutonic Knights or the Templar or something like that. So he was captured by them and held in captivity for several years. He escaped in 1640 and went back to uh, present-day Morocco where he was appointed as governor of a fortress. Okay, and he lived out the rest of his days there. Okay, so how does this relate to America? Well, one of his sons is named Anthony. Okay, Anthony Yansoon. Anthony, in 1630, emigrated to, where else? New Amsterdam. Now, New Amsterdam is what is now known as New York City, of course. Uh, so he came there with his wife and promptly made a name for himself, his wife and, and himself. Uh, were very uh, well-known, very scandalous couple. His wife was actually a well-known prostitute, and he was known for being uh, very ill-tempered, you know, drunk, uh, you know, not getting along with their neighbors. They were constantly in court, being sued by their neighbors for their scandalous behavior, uh, and it got so bad they were finally expelled uh, from Manhattan. Uh, but because of his wealth, because of his reputation, he was allowed to settle in Brooklyn, where he was given 200 acres, okay, around where Coney Island is now. So he was actually one of the earliest settlers of Brooklyn, uh, of New Netherland, and he was one of the largest landowners in that area. So he and his wife both uh, lived out the rest of their days there and passed away. They would have seen uh, the colony taken over by the British in 1664, and they, they passed away in uh, 1669 and 1676, respectively. Okay, um, but they were one of the earliest settlers of the colony and just goes to show you how, how kind of diverse uh, you know, New Amsterdam was at that time. Interestingly, uh, they had four daughters who, despite their parents' uh, reputations, actually grew up to be, by all accounts, uh, respectable ladies. And uh, it was through one of them who actually, uh, one of the descendants is none other than Cornelius Vanderbilt the railroad tycoon. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this tale of uh, some of the interesting characters that inhabited New Netherland and kind of highlights the diverse origin of early America. See you next time.